And Christine, joining us now is Rob Morgan, the Chief Investment Strategist at Fulcrum Securities and still with us, of course, uh, uh, one of our guest hosts for the last half hour, Marla Malcolm Beck, uh, the CEO of Blue Mercury, and Tim Harris, uh, the CEO of Harris Capital. Rob, I want to start with you. Last month, you came on and said that we were going to have a really a long time to buy, not necessarily buy on dips. I'm keeping you honest here because a lot of our loyal viewers watch your words very carefully. So why, though, are you changing your tune uh, just a little bit? I mean, you're, you're becoming a little bit less bullish these days. Why? Well, Nicole, I, I, we're, we're, we're entering a period now with uh, China slowing their economy, uh, the, the European debt situation, which wasn't nearly as apparent uh, a month ago, where I think uh, we still have great fundamentals here in the U.S., great earnings. You know, Ross a minute ago talked about great earnings in Europe. So great earnings right now are battling with the wall of worry, and that's, that's European debt problems and, uh, and China slowing the economy. And basically, I think that's going to... Uh, we're basically going to have a sideways market as we as we head into the summer. Uh, I, I would st we're still overweight stocks. We do we do like stocks, uh, but at the same time, I'm, I'm just not quite as optimistic as I was a month ago. And, and Rob, as you know, uh, consumer discretionary has been outperforming the market. We have Marla with us here. Is that going to continue? I mean, we, we need to have a strong U.S. consumer for anything else. I think we are absolutely fine as the market, as long as the market doesn't go below 10,000. I worry if we start to go below 10,000, but I don't see that happening. You know, he's saying it's going to go sideways. I, I think that's fine. She's still going to be out shopping. Um, people are still going to be buying clothes. You have the whole advent of fast fashion, throwaway fashion. That market is so strong wrong and it's easy to buy. Uh, okay, let's bring Tim in here, sitting with me in London as well. Tim, uh, what's going to win out here uh, uh, you know, over the summer and into the autumn? Uh, the debt concerns that pulls back all risk appetite or weaker equities, is that opportunity to step in and buy? Well, last time I was in, I was talking about the value that remains in the equity market. The earnings momentum is very positive and that value is still there. US equities is on a forward multiple of about 13, 14. The risk premium, ironically, is in Europe. Uh, European equities trade 11, 12 times forward earnings, less, less expensive than Asia. I think Rob makes a, a very interesting observation about China, and clearly you've seen with mining stocks sharply reflecting that uh, this, the, um, this very week. Um, I think investment in China is something which will continue at pace. It's the retail sector, and in particular the real estate sector, where reserve requirement ratios or maybe even interest rate more explicitly action will, will be seen and I think that's something we should expect to see uh, an engine of growth tiring down. Of course when you look at global uh, GDP growth, the, the change of GDP growth is fundamentally driven by the US and China and if China is seeing a, slow, a slowdown that's going to be a bit of a headwind for risky assets uh, buyers. So in my view I think we are range trading, um, 1100 is my buying level on the S&P, that, that is a very attractive valuation, I mean, I'm not putting any catalyst behind that, I think it would be disingenuous to put, put the catalyst behind it today, um, but I think the value is there, the risk premia are there, um, interest rate policies going to be a stimulative as it can. Fiscal drag is something we've got to have a look at as well. We touched upon this earlier. Fiscal drag was all the stimulus we've uh, been seeing. Not only have the bills got to be picked up, but the stimulus tires after 18 months full on. Hey Rob, this is Christine. Yeah, Tim mentioned China being an engine of growth. I mean, we had an official statistics guy come out to say that China is going to post 9% growth this year. Do you really think China is so immune from all the global, global turmoil that's out there? <laughs> Well, I, I don't think they're immune, Christine. And, and in fact, as I, as I mentioned before, the, uh, the government is, is uh, concerned about inflationary pressures in China, and, and so they're they're doing their part as, as best they can to uh, to slow the, con the economy as well. Uh, at, the, at the same time, uh, it does seem like there's some some value in the overall market there. So I, I wouldn't be if, if I were a U.S. or European investor considering China, I would I wouldn't be bailing out of the market in, entirely here. And Marla is still here with us, Rob. She's nodding her head as well because China is a huge market. I mean, there's a lot of expansion there. Beauty is $270 billion right. business worldwide. And globally, we're seeing much more of an uptick. All we hear from the global cosmetics companies is not what is your China strategy, but how quickly can you go there. You see that Estee Lauder just bought a company in India. International expansion is a huge opportunity, especially with the U.S. cosmetics market maturing. Um, so I don't think anyone's going to pull back on their expansion. They're going to 
use this time to invest wisely. Mala, this is Christine. Let me jump in. Um, how competitive do you think the cosmetics industry is in China right now? Uh, I, I think the growth is extremely high and extremely opportunistic. Uh, you have Avon that went in there years ago um, as a direct seller. The Chinese uh, government pulled back on direct selling and went back in and said it's okay to be a direct seller. They have a clear lead. Um, I, I think as the consumer has more disposable income, these are affordable luxuries. And so it's a market that booms ahead of any other market. And travel retail is also helping with that. People are going it's to one of the airport. strongest segments right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely, no question. Okay, Marla Malcolm back, uh, CEO of Blue Mercury, stays with us. Rob Morgan, the Chief Investment Strategist at Fulcom Securities, stays with us as well. Tim Harris stays with us as well.